Hey everyone, we got a call this afternoon from Bob over at Sleeveless Stuff. Bob was telling us about a truck that a friend of his is restoring and he's having Bob hand letter the truck. Bob has been sign painting since 1969 and he's pretty good at it. Let's take a look. Got a pounds pattern that we made here off of this original piece of artwork that we got off the internet, which is what the guy chose to have on the doors of this truck. So this is an old sign painter's trick, and that means that it, I have a little wheel that makes tiny little holes in here, and that way you can copy what you do. That's the way sign painters always used to replicate their work on different things. So uh, right now I'm putting the shell logo back in with powder, then I have to redraw it because uh, the light in here sucks so bad that I can't see the powder on there because of all the shadows and such. So I'm, I'm positioning this back on there and putting the powder back on it and then I'm having to re redraw it with a, with a grease pencil. Bob, how long have you been doing this? Started when I was 15 years old in 1969. Started lettering race cars at home in Missouri. Second year I did it when I was 16 years old, I did over 100 cars. Wow. So, and then shortly thereafter, I got to doing drag cars, and then I got the bug to be painting the backgrounds because they were all custom painted. So, I started picking up a paint gun in 1970 and um, started painting on top of lettering. And I've been doing it ever since. So, have you done drag cars? What other what kind of vehicles have you done? I always say anything that floats, flies, or goes fast. Because I've done airplanes, racing boats, exhibition, jet exhibition vehicles, um, any kind of a race car that you could name, I've, I've done. A lot, a lot, a lot of dirt cars and a lot of drag cars. Okay, so the powder is barely visible, and so now I've got to go over it with this grease pencil so I can see what I'm going to do when I get ready to to letter this. And today all I'm going to do is, because I don't want to get my hand in everything else, I'm only going to do the shell sign of the logo, which tomorrow we'll be putting motor oil and gasoline on the bottom of it. And that'll take about all day to do three logos of that. This is kind of a really old-fashioned shell logo because the newer ones have little veins in each one of these lines that forms the shell, so I don't know how old this particular logo is, but I'm guessing in the 50s or 60s. So the subject matter today is a, an old uh, oil tank truck, Mack truck, right? What year is this Mack truck? 1949. 1949. Yeah, EFU, <clears throat> which I don't know what that means, but... I always think it looks like uh, they used to use to fuel airplanes back in the day. I don't know what its actual purpose was. Gorgeous vehicle. According to the appraiser that comes and appraises Mick Padula's stuff that I'm working on here, he has the nicest collection of Mack trucks in the United States, and I don't doubt that a bit. They're all just as nice as they can be. We're doing one right now for him at the shop, uh, a 1960 model road tractor that had one original owner here in North Carolina and Mick tells us when we're working on it that we are to have the bottom side of it absolutely as nice as the top so we've been on this thing for like three months trying to get every every bit of the sheet metal perfect and every detail taken care of. Yeah, I think it's really nice that the owner here has uh, decided to go with the hand lettering rather than what most people would do today is just throw the vinyl sticker on and be done with it, right? You know, you can look at all the dozens and dozens of work vehicles he has and they are all decaled, but everything in this museum of here, his, is all hand lettered because they're all old trucks and that's the way 
he used to have them done when he was up in New York. So uh, I've been hand lettering and pinstriping his truck since he's been in North Carolina, if it's an old one. So you're using scotch tape here for what? Well, it's an old sign painter's trick to get the line of your lettering top and bottom straight. You can put it on all the edges if you wanted to, but uh, scotch magic transparent disappearing tape or whatever it's called is the type that we use because it's so thin it doesn't puddle the sign paint up on the edge of it. Super, super thin and, and uh, makes a good crisp line for us there. brush. Now Bob, tell us about the paint you use. Is, well, this, is this different than regular old paint I can just go buy at a hardware store? Yeah, well, they've been making sign paint for a bazillion years. In the old days, the sign painters actually used to make their own paint. It was varnish and some pigments. And uh, uh, there's been several companies, I don't know who's still in business, but uh, I, I still use sign painters one shot. It's the best that's ever been in the last five years or so. PPG bought them out, so the, the quality of it's even better than it was. Of course, the price went up considerably, but <laughs> it's just a very high gloss, very outdoor durable enamel. And you can put a hardener in it to make it even more durable, which is what I did on these backgrounds so that they wouldn't be, when I letter on top of them, they wouldn't lift. Wouldn't wrinkle up from me putting on wet paint on top of the other paint. So let me ask you this, how many, how many vehicles did you letter before you thought you were good at it? I don't know, looking back at all these things that are on uh, um, vintage race car, Facebook websites and all that stuff that you see nowadays, abandoned racetracks, abandoned race cars, and they'll put up all these cars and I'll go back and find ones that I've done and I go, boy, I sucked at that, but I was, after all, a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> and I did get plenty of work, so I, you know, I guess I can't complain. So Bob, you've done airplanes and race cars and trucks and all kinds of stuff. Is there anything on your bucket list that you'd like to, uh, like to, like to letter? Uh, well, I've, I've, I've done NHRA, everything in NHRA, and I've won 13 NHRA National Event Best Appearing Car Awards, and that was pretty cool. That's very cool. I've won... Um, my bike won Best of Show at Sturgis in 1999 that I built, and I got the Grand Masters Award for a street rod that I built uh, in 96, and that went to Hot Summer Nights and was the Grand, Grand Masters Award. So that, those three things are pretty cool, and I don't know how I could, I could top those, but that was, that was fun winning that. So you change brushes? Change brushes because now I'm using a little uh, a, a fancy pinstriping brush that a guy makes that's really cool that it can make thick and thin lines real easy and you can do curly 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 artwork with uh, this type of pinstriping brush. Uh, just acquired this recently and it's just been a lot of fun to get to play with it because it makes a really cool line. I always say anything that floats, flies, or goes fast. Goodbye.